Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman and in this lesson we're going to dive deep into exploring two intervals that are so important they are the foundation of almost all scales in music. If you've been doing my earlier lessons you actually already know these intervals as half steps and whole steps but today we're going to learn them by their more formal names minor seconds and major seconds and we're going to learn tools for training both your ears and eyes to be able to recognize them quickly when you see or hear them. Let's come to the piano to get started. What is a minor second? A minor second is the same as a half step, which means two keys so close together there is no key in between. This is a minor second between E and F. Also between F and F sharp is a minor second. F sharp to G is another minor second. However, F to G is not a minor second because there's a key in between. Anytime there's a key in between, not a minor second. Composers use minor seconds in a lot of different ways. One way that composers love to use minor seconds is for something really emotional or passionate, romantic, with a lot of feeling, like the start of Fur Elise is very famous for the use of those two notes, just a minor second apart, E and D sharp. And notice how the, that minor second creates such a sweet, loving, beautiful sound. Lots of composers have used that since Beethoven first wrote for Elise, like the composer Yiruma, Recently, in River Flows in You, notice that use of a minor second between this A and the G sharp also creates a really sweet sound. Just see how beautiful and sweet that minor second can be. But minor seconds aren't always sweet. They can also be very intense, especially if played down low on the piano like for the Jaws theme. John Williams uses a minor second down very low to make a very intense and dangerous sound. So that's the theme from Jaws. Minor seconds also can sound mysterious if used in a context like in the Pink Panther theme. Notice we've got a C sharp down low going up a minor second, up another minor second, up another minor second, all in a row, paired with the same thing up here. Notice those are all minor seconds. And the melody too also has a lot of minor seconds. The Pink Panther theme is built all on minor seconds. Look, we've got D sharp E, that's a minor second. F sharp G, another minor second. Another minor second up here, C, B. Notice no key in between any of those. Creates a really mysterious sound in that context. When you have a major scale, like here's our C major one octave scale, you'll always find the minor second between Mi and Fa and between T and Do. Like for example, let's take the D major scale. Where are the minor seconds? Once again, between Mi and Fa and T and Do. That's where you'll find the minor seconds. Always in a major scale, you'll find them between the third and fourth notes the seventh and eighth notes, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. That's what makes a major scale sound major is where those minor seconds are placed. Now let's practice looking for minor seconds in a score. Here's Mozart's famous Rondo alla Turca. Can you find the minor seconds in the score here in the first two measures plus Pick up, pause the video, and look through the right hand part. See if you can find, there are a few minor seconds. Can you find them all?
Okay, we have some minor seconds right here at the start with this A and G sharp. We also have some minor seconds with this C, B, C, and then another minor second right here from F to E. And last of all, here from E to D sharp back to E. And this is one case where I think these minor seconds are giving kind of a mysterious, exciting sound. Next, let's take a look at measure 13 from Prelude in C minor, which we've been learning recently. Can you find the minor second here in measure 13? Pause the video to find it, then press play and we'll check it out. Here in the right hand part, we have an A natural and then a B flat, flat because of the key signature, and that forms a minor second. And notice here, I think it creates an intense sound. Notice that kind of tension created there. Now let's play a little minor second hunt game. Here are two intervals. Can you figure out which one of these is a minor second? It might help to try and play it on your piano. Find the minor second and point to it. If you're pointing here to the one on the left, you're correct. We have a bass D flat going down to bass C, just a minor second apart. The treble staff one was B flat to C, not a minor second because it has a key in between. Here's another one. Point to the two notes that form a minor second. If you're pointing to the one on the left, you are correct. We have a G down to an F sharp, no key in between, so we know that's a half step or more formally called a minor second. The treble staff one had a C sharp to a B, not a minor second because there's a key in between. Now let's talk about major seconds. A major second is essentially two minor seconds to form what we also can call a whole step. C to D is a whole step. The easiest way to recognize a major second is there will always be exactly one key in between, black or white. So C to D is a major second, D to E is a major second. You can see because there's that black key in between. But what about E? How do I go up a major second from E? Well, we always skip exactly one key, black or white. So a major second above E would be F sharp. Remember, we also call these whole steps. They mean exactly the same thing. Major second is the same as whole step. Okay, where's a whole step above F sharp? What if we want to keep going by whole steps? Or major seconds, I should say. We would go here. Okay, see now we're skipping this white key. So F sharp to G sharp is also a major second. Another major second another major second. We could actually make a scale out of all major seconds. It's called the whole tone scale. C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, C. And if you hold down the damper pedal, it kind of makes this like in movies if you're like going into a weird dreamland, you know. I don't think composers do that very much these days because it sounds kind of cheesy, but you know, it kind of sounds like you're going into magical dreamland right? So whole tone scales have a very unique sound like that, built all on major seconds. So how do composers use major seconds? I feel like major seconds have a nice, bold, and strong, solid sound. They can sound very cheerful, uh, used often in songs like Happy Birthday to You. Happy Birthday. Notice that major second right there. It has a cheerful sound. Happy birthday. Listen how different that would sound with a minor second. Happy birthday. Maybe if you're sad about your birthday. Oh, sorry. No presents for you. Sounds a lot happier with that major second. Happy birthday to you. Right? What would we do without major seconds? Back to our very first song, if you've learned with me that long. Hot cross buns. Hot cross buns. 
What interval do you notice? They're all major seconds. And isn't that a cheerful sounding song? Hot cross buns. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Notice that major second had a very shine. Doesn't that sound cheerful? Nothing's more cheerful than Rudolph, right? In a major scale, most of the steps are major seconds. Let's go back to the C major scale. Remember, we identified a minor second here and here, but the rest are all major seconds. C to D is major second, major second. There's the one minor second. Well, one of two. Major second, major second, major second, and then one more minor second. And that's how you build a major scale. Now, let's try to hunt for some major seconds on the staff. Let's go back to the Rondo a la Turca that we were just looking at a second ago. Pause the video and can you find all the major seconds in this opening? Pause to find the major seconds, then press play and we'll check them out together. There was one major second here from the very first note to the second note, that B to A is a major second. Then in the next full measure, we have a D to a C, which is a major second. And those are all the major seconds in this short example. Now let's go back to Prelude in C minor and check out measure 31. Can you find a major second in measure 31? Here in the right hand part, we have a G to an A natural, which creates a major second. And then we have a few more A natural, G, A natural, G. So all those A naturals to Gs, all major seconds. Notice that has a very different sound than the minor second we looked at earlier from measure 13, much more kind of moody and intense and then we get that major second sound here in measure 31. Now let's play our game again, but this time point to the two notes that form a major second. If you're pointing to the one on the right, you're correct. We have a treble G stepping down to F. That forms a major second. The one on the left was D to E flat, which is a minor second. Okay, let's try another one. Point to the two notes that form a major second. If you're pointing to the one on the right, you are correct. We have G flat to A flat. Notice that has one key in between, so that is a major second. On the left, we had an F sharp to a G, which is a minor second. Now, let's play one more game. I want you to learn to recognize these intervals by sound without seeing them at all. So we're going to blur out my hands so you can't exactly see what I'm playing at first. And I want you to tell me, are you hearing a minor second or a major second? And the trick to do this is think to yourself, does this sound like the kind of sound I heard with like Fur Elise? Does it have that kind of sweet, or poignant or intense sound? Or does it sound more like the start of the start of Rudolph? If you hear that major second sound, if you could imagine a do, re, mi out of the notes I played, then you know it's a major second. If it sounds like this more intense, really close together sound, that's how you'll recognize the minor second. So, I'm going to play a mystery interval, and I'd like you to say out loud major second or minor second. Here's the first one. Listen one more time. What did you hear? If you said minor second, you're correct. Now you can see I played D to E flat has that intense and also kind of sweet minor second sound. Here's the next one. What did you hear? Listen one more time. 
If you said minor second, you're correct. Take a look. I played B, A sharp, and see that has that intense, like Jaws sound. That's a minor second. Here's the next one. Listen one more time. What did you hear? If you said major second, you're correct. These notes could be part of hot cross buns. Can you imagine that carrying on? And if you can imagine as part of hot cross buns, that's a good clue that it's a major second. Let's try the next one. Listen one more time. What did you hear? If you said minor second, you're correct. Take a look. I played E, F. Has that intense, very close together, can't get any closer together sound. Here's another one. Here it is again. What did you hear? If you said major second, you're correct. Happy birthday. See how I could turn those two notes into happy birthday or Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Okay, major second. Now, if you didn't get all of those correct, that is totally normal. Your ears are learning to recognize these sounds. So come back and maybe do this lesson again tomorrow and keep practicing on your own. You could even close your eyes and randomly play two notes near each other and try and see if you can tell, is it a major second or minor second? Then open your eyes and see if you're correct. Keep practicing until you can recognize these intervals easily and then start noticing it in all the music you hear. There are important intervals for all music that you'll play for the rest of your life. Great work learning all about minor and major seconds and learning to recognize them by sight and by sound. Thanks for watching and learning with me and happy practicing. Oh, don't minor seconds sound cool? Uh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why not? Uh, don't you know what theme that is? Huh? It's the Jaws theme. The Jaws theme? Did somebody say Jaws? Uh, uh. I was just showing Princess how much I like minor seconds. Wanna hear? Yes, please. Okay, here goes. Oh, you know, that interval makes all sharks have an irresistible urge to... To hum Beethoven's for Elise? Nope. Uh, to write poetry? Nope. Then what? To bite. Ah! I tried to warn you. Ah!